you can see that movement like that ta-da new u joint so solid Ryan's mobile one one of the things I like to notice immediately is that you've got the grease zerk on this for the shaft for this to slide in and out. You see how that moves? You can have the length change without breaking anything. Uh, another thing is I'll turn this and you'll see that there's a little bit of a bulge here. That bulge is to accommodate a grease zerk. It doesn't have a grease zerk here on this one. The new one it does have a grease zerk. I'm happy. I found one that'll fit. So you'll line these up, you look at how they are across from each other, make sure they're the same length. Uh, you also take the caps, make sure that they're the same like this, and they feel the same when I squeeze at the joint between the two of them. I have one here and one here, they feel the same. All right, so what I do on these, I'm gonna loosen this up. I only need to have it this way because the other end is held by clamps or straps as they're called. This one actually had a lot of knocking on it. You can see almost all the play for this joint is right here at the bottom. You can see that movement. If I turn it a little bit, the movement goes away. But if I line it up the way it was in the machine, in the machine, the first thing I do, I get all the crud off. Screwdriver, it's a flat head. Just think like a chisel. Like that. Next thing I do is I'll get right down in the curve of it. Just kind of hit it. That helps to break it out all the way around here. Do the same on the other side. Sometimes that's all you need to do to get it to come out. You see you got a little bit sticking out this way. Ta-da! Where'd it go? I don't know. Don't care. We'll just flip it over. We'll do the other side the same way. Same thing. Work it out there. You see the angle that I'm doing, I'm kind of tucking it in like that. Pop it up, eye protection is a good idea. And if you have to, knock it back the other way. And we're out. So I've got my oil dipper and a tr transmission fluid in it. I just let it pool. Reason being is that transmission fluid has all kinds of stuff that gets rid of any kind of rust or corrosion. Let that marinate. I'll stick this here, tighten it up. You can use an impact gun if you have extreme green on your thread. All your different uh, presses will say not to do this. It says do not use an impact. Make sure that you use eye protection. I use Holmes. They work the best for me. It's just really sad because they're more expensive. Be nice if something cheaper worked better. Because I scratch them up. Alright, so get this lined up. Tighten it up like this. What we want to do is bottom this out here and then stop. So we'll back out. I wish I had the right O-ring to hold this in. See, it's got a little groove right there to hold it in. Get your pliers, grab onto them, give it a little tap at the joint of your pliers, it'll come out. You can see that the uh, bearings in this, those little needle bearings are just shot. Totally destroyed. Flip it over and we'll do the other side. Do be careful not to break your grease zerk. If you do, they are replaceable. It's not the end of the world. It'd be nice if you just pull it out from here, but we've got to drive it back down the other way now. Don't drink and drive. U joints, etc. I'm using the Milwaukee Fuel. I'll leave a link in the description for that. You may even find it in the comments. Fuel just means that it's brushless. If you've done RC trucks or planes or helicopters, you can appreciate the difference that brushless makes. The cap fell out the bottom. This was our troublemaker. You can see all the rust and all the yuck. Um, I'm going to share a couple more tips. Stay tuned. If you already know how to do this, um, there's an in-between step that a lot of people, if you don't have experience, if you haven't worked in the shop, you're just not going to know about. And that is what can happen on the inside. So we've got both the caps out each side. Just take your pliers, get rid of the seal here. Or you can take your hammer and screwdriver, whatever it takes. Work it out, get it off, cut it off. It'll make it so that it'll clear. But don't be shy. Get in there. Show them who's boss. With that one out, you can shove it up into here. And it just clears right out. Piece of cake.
Okay, that one was a little hard. So the next thing you can do is you can get a dental pick or just whatever. You can even use a flathead screwdriver. Just want to clean out the channel. This makes it a lot easier to put the new snap rings in. To the point that I wanted to make, when you're into these, there's a lot of little things that can cause leaks. If this is a slip shaft that goes into a transfer case or something, oftentimes you'll find that they'll leak at the end of this slip yoke. Uh, use brake parts cleaner, get all cleaned up, take a little Permatex right stuff on your finger, or stick the nozzle down in there and seal it up and you're good. This one in particular has a problem in that uh, when you go to grease it, instead of going to the slip yoke, in fact it's got a little bit of play. It's got a little bit of play, you can see that? You can hear it. And the reason why is there's nothing to hold the grease on this end. So I need to clean this up and I need to weld something in here or do something so that the grease gets back pressure enough when you put it in at the grease circuit to come out through here. Because as it is, it goes to here and going in and out like this, now it's getting grease on the shaft. But before, it was just puking it out here and just making a huge nasty ball of grease. Something fell off at some point. Probably wind up using this one, then I have a lot smaller one. The funny thing is that it keys up with the teeth. I've never seen such an easy fit for that. I tried wire brushing this by hand and it was taking forever and it was clogging my wire brush up full of the junk that's in there. So I just did it on the workbench. For those of you who don't know what that looks like, allow me to demonstrate. You hit the go button and let the wire wheel do the rest. Wear eye protection, all that fun good stuff. By angling the drive shaft you can get into pretty much anywhere you need to get into to get that cleaned up and then just spray out the junk at the end with brake cleaner. But you gotta do that to weld anyway. So this is what I have. I've got just four welds. It's not perfectly balanced. I just tried to line it up with the spline so that it wasn't hard to undo if you had to do it. All I want is a cap. I just need something to fill in that middle part now. So I'm gonna find a small washer with a small opening and close that up. Okay, so I found a washer that just about fits that perfectly. I'll just have that there, I'll tack it on. I'll probably burn my finger. I've done it once already. So that's it before the cleanup. I got most of it with the wire wheel. I'm just gonna hit it with this. I will be painting this here in a minute. Grinders and paint make me the welder I ain't. Now I know this seems like it's not the way to go and there's a lot of better ways to do this. Uh, but for me, just getting it done, I mean, if you've lived in a house full of girls that are always, there's so many distractions, there's so many things, I just want to get this done, get the machine back in order. So uh, I know it looks like it looks, but I'm just tickled to be able to save this shaft from getting more play than it had. I'll seal it up with some silicone, paint it, and it's going to look great and work just as good. Just kind of seal this in. I don't have the exact tap that's supposed to go here. This way at least I have something. I think this may go a long way to prevent water and garbage from getting in there too. I'm using engine paint. It works awesome on everything. But if there is going to be some heat involved, the ceramic paint's the trick. Might as well make it look new, right? We're in here. Another nice thing about this engine paint is it dries so quickly. Before putting in a new joint, line up your joint that's about to go in and just verify where the grease circ's going to go. The sooner you can realize, like this one has a grease circ right here, so you want to be able to hit those at the same time. And usually your zerks will go to the inboard side or toward the shaft. General rule of thumb. So this one's going to go in like this, which means I'm going to pull off this cap here and pack a bunch of extra grease in it and this cap here and set the rest of this somewhere it'll stay clean. Another thing I'm going to do now, I've got a trash can to catch any extra drips. I'm going to drip some transmission fluid on my finger and I'm going to put it in the groove where the snap ring goes. That works kind of like anti-seize. It helps it to go in but it also prevents corrosion. It has all kinds of additives and things in it that really help things to not seize up, work properly. Transmissions are expensive. Companies don't want to have warranty claims. This is what it looks like when a needle bearing falls over. And these needle bearings, they're not very thick, so it's hard to catch. But if it doesn't go all the way within the spec of how wide that is, then you'll know that you've got one that's fallen over. You gotta pull it off and start over. So I take a little bit of grease on my finger. I wipe it off. 
Just like you're wiping a booger on your desk, under your desk in school. Anybody do that? Just me? Ah, whatever. So I've got this all set up, ready to go. I'll put a little grease on the outside here. What this does is it creates a layer, like a ramp or a buttress, you know, like you hold up a wall with. Uh, but it helps to hold those needle bearings up against the side. When this is independent like this and you're banging it and shaking it, it they can fall and get into all kinds of trouble. This way they stay in place where they're supposed to be. And then the extra grease can go in these little spots. There's a hole in each of these so it has a means of escape. It'll get in through these and go where it needs to go to get out of the way. Alright, let's begin. So again, we know our grease circ is going to go here. So we take our joint and stick it in like that. And then we take each of our uh, caps and just kind of twist them and work them. If you put your U-joint uh, up into it like that, that can make it easier. That way you know that you're in pretty straight. I'm looking down through the hole here. So you look down here, you can see if you're centered or not just like that. Then I take the other cap and then just run it in from the back side or bottom side. I'm really glad that I put some transmission fluid in that now. It should tap pretty easily. That way I can just kind of scout it and look at it from the top. Get it to where it's close and then get it to where it's right in between the both of them. You can use a press or you can use a hammer. Either one will work. Just make sure everything goes evenly. You can put it in the vise this way and just go in slow. I just don't like hammering them in as much as I like uh, pressing. but. If you press it, you can kind of see if it's crooked, and you can wrap on it with a hammer a little bit and get it to get happy. And you can watch it go in and see if there's something hanging it up. Another thing, another tip that I've been taught is you can run the you can run the U-joint side to side a little bit and see if it'll go all the way to one end and all the way to the other one. And this one does, so we can go ahead and finish it up. We know that we don't have any laying down. So you can take a socket and knock it the rest of the way. You can take your press and press it in. Run it down. I just want to get this one low enough to where I can get the snap ring on it. That's enough. So you can see or feel with your fingernail, I've got access to that groove. All these a G ring, it looks like a letter G. Just line it up in there. Uh, these pliers are a little too big, so what I'll do is I'll get just the corner of them. Just lay it down in. Once you get it past that initial little bit, just push it in and let it click into place. I'll rotate it around. I want to do this one by hand. If you were to use an impact gun, you could break the ring or do some kind of damage. It wouldn't be permanent. You'd be able to come back from it, but this way you just keeps you safe. That's just gliding right down in there. It's a lot easier to feel if you're driving it by hand. If you're hammering, if you're doing something where it's not manual, you won't be able to feel when you're done and it makes them bind up. That's okay, it's not a big deal. Uh, you can actually put this in the vise and hammer on the yoke right here and it pushes this one up, loosens it up, flip it over, do the same thing, vise, hammer, loosen the other one up. It's not a big deal. If you're new at this, you might be really nervous, you might be freaking out like, oh no, it's got to be perfect. No, there's a lot of salvation to be found after a mistake even. I'm here to give you the experience you need to be able to do that. Well shoot, that's pretty spiffy. You'd never guess that I took my uh, washer bin out and just found crap and welded it in there. It actually looks pretty good. Let's throw a grease gun on it and see what she does, shall we? So if I did good, seal this in. This will do what it's doing and start expanding out that way. And boy, <laughs> and that's what it's doing, so that makes me happy. So I do have a little bit of relief out of there, and that's not a bad thing. You can see I've got some grease coming out there. But basically it's pushing out this and really getting some good grease packing down the shaft. But I do have some relief, so if I push it, or if over time you've got some pressure, it'll release. And that's awesome. Well, that's a good repair. You can see I spray painted the crap out of it using some uh, ceramic engine paint, as I like to do. And uh, I got both U joints done, as you saw. I've got grease cirques on both of them. And uh, I'm going to throw it back in. And there it is, all installed and ready to rock.
That thing was making so much noise and growling, but I couldn't tell where it was coming from because you sit in the cab. Well, you can't see the steering wheel, I got everything covered up. You sit in the cab here and it's like everything on this side sounded loud because that joint was bad. So I've pretty much got this thing all reliable. It's a forklift as you can see, uh, but I was having flat tires, uh, the engine was shot, the fuel injection pump was bad. I've gone through and done all that, I rebuilt the engine. So basically that was the last thing that was really bugging for being able to move this around. Wanted to be able to store it off site if I wanted to. Um, got everything secure, welded studs on everything. I've got footage of all kinds of stuff, including using ether to get these inflated and then uh, finding a better way. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I've got days and days of footage on this thing. Just trying to decide how much of it you guys want to see. Also under here, all your controls are managed by basically four plungers and four cables. And uh, I've got a new control, a new joystick to put in this. And I've got some footage from replacing the old joystick. I'm curious if anybody wants to see that. You can see the building, it's still just over my shoulder there. I don't have any sheeting on it yet. But I'm working on it. It's been really windy and stormy and I've had so many other projects including the uh, trip down to Canyonlands. Here's a little clip from that. If you request in the comments, there's a pretty good chance I'll make a video on it. So, anyway, comment below. Cheers, thanks for watching.